Hey guys, this is Steve with Eikmo Krav Maga here at Eikmo Krav Maga HQ, enjoying this uh, rainy day in isolation. I hope you guys are staying fit and healthy. Today we're bringing you a few helpful tips and tools to train at home. Now, unlike other videos we've done, where we've shown you different tools that you can find around the house for workouts such as calisthenics and stretching, this video is going to be more focused on household items that you can use for fight training specifically. Now these are tools to train certain techniques. Those techniques, by the way, we've done in other videos and we will be doing in later videos as well, all right? So let's start with something super simple that everybody has at home, a mirror, all right? And by the way, don't worry about uh, having to pause the video and jotting down this list. We'll have that for you in the post so you can just uh, take those down yourself at a later date. So mirrors, everybody has one. What I like to do in front of the mirror is really work the details of the technique, all right? Yes, you can be naturally strong, naturally fast, but there's a lot to be said about how you move your body with the proper technique. It'll help accuracy, help speed and power, and uh, it'll actually prevent injury during combat. Let me give you just one example. If I have a mirror in front of me, I wanna make sure that my, again, my hands are parallel, okay? Not one hand in front of the other, or I'm not doing a karate stance. I'm trying to keep those hands here, so as to present uh, uh, an appearance of uh, trying to resolve things uh, verbally, try to keep things calm, and then from there I can start striking. In the mirror, I can catch myself if I'm wadding up my fist prematurely and therefore telegraphing. That's one exercise you could do. Maybe I'm practicing my in-step kicks with my lead leg. Now I know that that depends on surprise. If I'm doing that and I spot myself sort of shuffling my feet before I kick, that's another mistake I have to correct. All right, now again, these are just quick examples of stuff that you're doing in front of the mirror. We'll be sending out videos, we'll be putting videos out, uh, breaking all of these down with each one of these exercises and how it incorporates these tools, okay? So, to give another example, uh, I wanna make sure that I'm punching to the right target. I'm not just throwing punches out there willy-nilly. I can take a piece of tape, just put it on the mirror, just one little square of tape, and that's gonna be my focal. So I'm making sure that every punch goes to that same target, all right? I wanna make sure I can see my hips moving or my feet moving, all right? When I practice going back and forth, is my foot position correct, all right? If I put a line of tape down the middle of the mirror, am I going off to the diagonal tangents correctly, all right? Going off the center line. So these are all things that I'm looking at. Be very careful with this type of technique because if you develop muscle memory and do it incorrectly, then that's what you're gonna do in the street, right? Working in front of a mirror really helps you work out those details, right? The devil's in the details. Work that and then you can always add speed. Start slow, then go faster, make sure de the details are perfect, and then you'll do much better in the street, okay? So that's the mirror. I'm gonna skip over this second point here for a second. I'm gonna come to the phone and laptop, and I'll tell you why. Phone and laptop is something everybody else has, and similar to the mirror. Every modern phone has a decent camera. And you can also play things back in slow motion, or you can film things in such a way it's gonna be easier to uh, play it back in slow motion. Set your phone up somewhere, and then have yourself practice some basic Krav Maga techniques. I like to do it from different vantage points. Have something that is you advancing towards the camera, and then have something that's a lateral view, all right? Do the same technique from different vantage points. Let's say you're working on stepping forward and striking. <clears throat> now, I'm actually not stepping, I'm just sliding, all right? Now, I want to make sure that this foot coincides with this punch. Bang! None of them, neither one is moving ahead of the other. They're moving at the same time. If I play it back in slow motion, maybe I catch that my foot was advancing first, then my hand. Well, now you got to practice not doing that. And just keep at it, keep at it. You go faster and faster and faster, it becomes natural. That becomes muscle memory, okay? And again, we'll have lots of videos in the future about how we break each one of these exercises down. I mean, to be honest, uh, a jab is a jab, but there's so much that you can learn about proper jabbing, about proper punching, all right? You're punching the right way, there's less of a chance of you breaking your knuckles or injuring your wrist or your arm, more of a chance that you're gonna hit your target, more of a chance of you stringing it together in a red sev. So those details really do matter. All right, you're not throwing wild punches up there. Right? You can't afford that type of mistake. So, make sure you film different uh, vantage points and catch yourself doing 
different techniques and make sure you're catching yourself up and making those mistakes when you're dropping your hands, when you're kicking with your hands down, all that type of stuff, okay? Uh, by the way, you can always do that with a phone or a laptop. Pillows and cushions. Everybody has one, all right? Now, I happen to not have pillows and cushions here at the academy. I'm going to have stand-ins for that. You grab a pillow, all right? In this case, I'm going to use a tombstone pad, but this will be your pillow, any pillow, all right? It's going to be a pillow you use to sleep, all right? But this pillow right here is going to be your training partner for a lot of your ground techniques, okay? Again, we're going to have videos uh, specifically tailored to this type of training. I'm just going to give you a few quick examples to let you know that you actually do have some pretty cool tools at home. You can take the pillow, grip it with your feet. You can do this, or you can try doing closed guard depending on the exercise, okay? Maybe right now you're practicing bringing them in for striking and moving them out. Maybe you're practicing how to lift your hips. Maybe you're practicing how to have an aggressor here in your open guard, capture them, and doing a hip bump and rolling them all the way over into full mount. Now your pillow becomes a striking dummy. All right, so those are just very basic drills. This is one of many drills that we'll be introducing in the upcoming days. Though that, that pillow now becomes a very practical tool. You can use your pillow to practice bucking upward, bucking this way as you're grabbing an opponent, you pretend it's a limb or someone's body, or if you're pretending it's a limb with a weapon, throwing it up here, touching it over here behind you, all right, or throwing it out into space this way, depending on what technique you're doing. All right, but that this helps in that type of drill. Okay, so um, that's a pillow. If you have a cushion from a couch, all right, which is roughly the same size, depending on what type of furniture you have at home, you could just use a couch pillow. All right, just something like this, or you can grab one of those smaller pillows from the living room, just like this, about this size, right? I mean, the cushions that are on your, those little pillows on your bed, which I sometimes think people have way too many of for no apparent reason, all right? You could use these. I'm pretending to be uh, uh, mounting an opponent, and I can practice doing strikes, making sure that maybe I have my camera set up so I'm combining different tools, and I make sure when I'm hitting, I'm not static, but I'm actually moving when I'm striking. I'm actually moving my body, I'm my hands are up when I'm striking. Those are little details you want to pick up on. Maybe I do it from this vantage point, and I'm not sitting on my haunches like this. If I'm doing this, look at my striking. I'm up, my feet aren't flat, they're in a dynamic position so I can move, right? So I can follow my, my opponent's movement. I'm moving my hips, I'm keeping my head striking, and when I'm doing this type of thing, I can watch it on playback and I can see where the mistakes are, and this is something everybody has at home. All right, and again, don't fret, these are just a few ideas. This is not really meant as a tutorial for those techniques. We'll have lots of tutorials coming up. A yoga mat. Uh, I happen to not have one here at the academy, but this will do. I've rolled up a yoga mat, all right? And if you roll this up, this can serve very much the same function. I've rolled up the yoga mat, I hold on to it here, all right? And then with this, I'm doing all different types of of techniques that I need to do for, for ground fighting, okay? These work. I can hold the yoga mat here as if it were a limb, all right? Grabbing someone's arm, bucking, coming up this way, coming all the way over, and here I am. I can work here, grab it, here, and come down into an arm bar, all right? I'm just practicing these different techniques using this as a limb. All right, that's something that everybody has. You can still do this, roll it up, throw a few strikes. Not very difficult to find, most people have it. And by the way, if you have a yoga mat at home, you have a couple, you lay those out, that's gonna be your surface for ground fighting, okay? For those of you who have been attending our online classes for kids and adults on Zoom, check out our class pass entry, by the way, uh, you can put those down at the beginning of class and that'll be your training surface, okay? because you don't have any carpeting at home. All right, moving on. Uh, yarn and ball. So let me start with the yarn first. What I've done here is I've taken some yarn. This could be any twine, string, probably not dental floss because you won't see it. 
I put some tape here to hold it in place. This could be anything, two walls, whatever it is. Why am I doing this? I wanna make sure that I know that there's a straight line right underneath it, that's my center line. The line that's directly beneath it on the ground, that's my center line. When I'm starting from here, I'm practicing how to bob and weave. Bob and weave. I play it back on my camera to see, are my hands down as I'm bobbing and weaving? Leaving my face exposed? Are my hands up? Am I bowing too much and then looking at the floor? Am I using my knees too much? Just extra pressure on the knees? It has to be a combination of everything. Also look at the position. If your head is up, tuck your chin in. Put your shoulders up a little. Make you have a smaller target. Make sure you're not thinking too much of a sidestep. Not doing this, that's, that's not it. But we're gonna have a few videos on this uh, activity as well, because there's a lot of good stuff here. In a fight, we want to overwhelm, you know, swarm our opponent with strikes. That's our red set concept, that's our bursting concept. It's very Krav Maga. But we also want to be able to move our head and our shoulders and our bodies efficiently and quickly so we're not always in the same exact place. Because then, our aggressor might get lucky and throw a, a strike and counter, or you know they just know where your head is at, they know where to send the mail, so you gotta be careful. So what are we doing? Here, maybe add a hook or a, or a body shot. Here, add an uppercut. I might punch, punch. I might do an overhand punch here. As I'm going this way, I'm learning how to do, how to do the displacement. If I, oh, there it is, I touched the string. So I know, okay, I gotta work on how I move and I don't, I don't touch the string as I move, all right? Because that would be the trajectory. This would be the trajectory of a punch. I have to be able to stay off that. Now I'm doing right leg leading, all right? Here I have an overhand, an uppercut, a body shot coming here, and there's the hook. This is a really great tool. It's something everybody has at home. Now, you take the string, all right, the yarn, the twine, whatever, tie it around a tennis ball. Tie it around anything, really, just any sphere or anything that you have at home. In this case, if you follow me, I didn't have a tennis ball. So I just took some Nerf ball that I had, and I put some tape on it, and it gives me this, all right? You can improvise. You know, duct tape does a lot. What am I doing with this? Something super simple. It's about this high. When I'm in my stance, boom, that's a dead shot to the nose. I'm moving it, bang, it's gonna hit me. What am I working here? As I move it, see? Very basic things, that's one. What I can do is I can go one, two, all right? Forward, one, two, all right? I can do it this way, one, turn this way, two, turn that way, one, turn this way, two. All these different things that I'm doing, just moving my head, all right? Trying to follow it. I can throw the ball, come under, hit, come, hit, one, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm combining my head movement with, uh, uh, with strikes, okay? If you get hit, not a big deal, it's very light. All right, now there's a, there's a whole video, a series of videos we can do about just this exercise. There's a ton of exercises that come with having this type of uh, setup. If you have a string strong enough, a surface strong enough, you wanna practice just doing a few shots to it here, some accuracy training, you could definitely do that, all right? I'm just always striking the same point. Now look, that's a very, so that's a very soft piece of yarn. All right, so I'm not hitting it super hard, I'm just going for accuracy. But look at the footwork, I'm switching feet. All right, switching feet. Then maybe I combine it, one. All right, then I'm coming back to here. Leading, crossing, moving, moving, moving. That type of thing. All these things help. Gets your cardio up, you work your technique. And if you find yourself doing sloppy footwork and the camera you're just doing this, or you're crossing over your feet, then you know that your footwork is wrong. All right, so always good to film yourself working these types of techniques, okay? Again, tons of things you could do with this. We can't get into it today, but please stay tuned because we will have lots of videos about this. All right, and that brings me to the last tool for today. There are many others, but let me just give you one more for the day. I don't like using duct tape for this. It's too adhesive. Use this here. Very simple. I'm gonna start with a spot right here on the floor. That's my focal point. My feet are equidistant. Bring this foot slightly back. That's my mug again right there. All right? 
That's where I start from. I know I have to be able to move in different directions. So what I'm gonna do is, I take a few more pieces of tape, I put one here, directly in front. I put one here, directly in back. I put one here, off to the side. And I put one here, off to the side. Here's one of the most basic drills with this. When I'm fighting, when I'm doing Krav Maga, I'm not lumbering forward as I strike. That's not an efficient way to move. All right, I'm quick on my feet, I'm explosive. Coming here, back, here, back, here, back, here. Now, to do that, if I'm gonna go forward, lead leg goes first. If I'm gonna go backward, back leg goes first. It doesn't matter which leg is in front. If I'm gonna go to my right, closest leg moves first. It wouldn't have mattered if it was right leg leading. This leg would still go first. But I want to make sure that when I'm filming myself, I'm looking in the mirror, or I'm going to look at the laptop, I'm not stepping and dragging my leg. I want to make sure that I'm taking several steps. I want to make sure that when I start in this position, I start at a nice distance where it's comfortable, it's natural, and when I come back here, my feet aren't too close together. Or when I'm here, my foot's hanging in the air. So there's a lot of little details that you're spotting with this placement. All right, I want to be able to do all of these, this leg leading, this leg leading, and practice it so that's always the same. Not dragging, not dragging, switching, back and forth. Quick, relax. Now, I can take those spots and remove them uh, and then put them somewhere else. So, let me just, uh, let's say I want to work on that's my center line between this point and this point. And this is the diagonal point I want to aim for. So this is a different exercise. And again, this is just one of many exercises. We'll be doing videos about this type of thing later. I'm just giving you some examples of what, they, what they're for. This is my center line. Back leg and a step here. I've redefined center line. Come back. This leg doesn't have to step very far. I've just redefined center line. See, now I'm diagonal. My aggressor's still there. All right? So I'm working on how to go from here and redefine those center lines. All right? I can put them closer and go here for Thai Sabakis, right? Shifting. Because we do a lot of shifting in Krav Maga. All right? Shifting in Krav Maga. So I know where these point, where these, uh, where my feet have to be. These techniques, trust me when I tell you, if your footwork is solid, your crop is gonna be great. Because you can learn the punch, you know what I mean? But if you are trying to move your aggressor, who's bigger, heavier, you're trying to move them away, you're trying to redirect their energy, and your footwork isn't right, you're stumbling over yourself, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work, especially if they're bigger and stronger. You have to have the proper footwork. You don't wanna be fumbling over your feet. So it's gonna be hard enough in real life. You're on gravel, you're on uh, asphalt, there's obstacles, you never know. All right, this is ideal flooring, but when are you ever gonna fight on a floor this ideal? Never, all right? So it's all about footwork. So that's what the tape could be for. You could use the tape for so many other things. You know that if I uh, am doing a forward shoulder roll, and I want to end up on that spot, and I end up over here, over here, it's wrong. I want to make sure I keep that in mind, I see that point, my shoulder's going to drop right on the same line as that spot. When I go this way, I want to make sure I end it up on that spot. All right, gives you something to, to look at, to focus on, okay? So there's dozens of, of, of ways that you could use tape on the floor. Guys, uh, get all this together for yourselves, make it part of your routine, Stay tuned for future videos, and we're gonna break these all down, and we're gonna give you tons of extra, I mean, there really are, there's multiple videos for each one of these things, really, all right? And if you look at the advanced Kravis, if you look at some of the higher belts at Aikmo, you look at the instructors, you look at the precision, the eye for detail, those things, there's a reason we tell you to, to really perfect that technique, okay? It just makes you better fighters.
right? Makes you a more efficient fighter. All right, good. I hope this was helpful. Uh, please feel free to submit other things that you want to see done here as far as household training uh, material. And, uh, you know, keep working hard, guys. I'll see you soon.